Good morning, y'all. Hope y'all got some sleep. What's today? Tuesday. Wednesday. Tuesday. Yeah. God bless y'all. Wake up. <laughs> All glory, honor, praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Gotta give credit and honor to who is due. No, no, go to me. I like what Deacon Smith said. Thank God for my reasonable portion. That reasonable portion of mine he gives you in the morning. Yeah. <clears throat> nah, life crazy. I'm gonna tell y'all this. If y'all think, because uh, y'all can see me, and uh, <laughs> I just think I got a lot of free time and stuff. I take care of my great grandma, and uh, grandma 94, 95 or something. I'm 27, 28. <laughs> I bet I gotta get used to saying that. And uh, been my grandma for a long time, man. And why right, be with her till she go? Make sure she go. And, uh, it's hard to see uh, your loved ones go through some things. It's a lot of things, man. Uh, things ain't easy. A lot of it's a whole lot of problems. Why? Right. Bible say the righteous person got a whole lot of problems, but the Lord delivers him out of mine. John 16, verse 33, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Only in him, you're going to have peace. Why? Nevertheless, God give you strength to keep on getting up and keep on. Keep your eyes and heart centered on him. All right. Where am I going to go to? Where am I going to go to? Let's see. <laughs> where do I pick up? Where I leave off at? I'm a, I, I don't know how long I'm gonna. I'm gonna see y'all, but I know I got to get to work soon. One one thing about uh, y'all don't need me. <laughs> I never forget. It was one morning. It was about three or four o'clock in the morning, where and uh, I forgot where I was at. But I was listening to Michael Youssef, Dr. Michael Youssef, and uh, Dr. Michael Youssef. I, lo I love that dude. Like where. Yeah, he a great, he a great pastor. <laughs> got a good heart. He, he, he said he, he said he was going all over the place one day, and one day he got sick, and the Lord put him in the. He got sick in the hospital, and the Lord spoke to him and said, uh, "Michael, I don't need you to do nothing. I can do it all by myself." He was getting caught up and doing everything, and uh, God got it all. One of my favorite, my very first book I ever read was Jeremiah, and. Uh, so over 2,000 years ago, the Lord told him to go preach to some people. And the Lord told him that the people that you're going to preach to ain't even going to listen to you. <laughs> All right. Over 2,000 years later, coincidentally, that was the first book I happened to pick up and read. All right. Bless God, man. God got his time. I believe he classes chapter 3. I say God made everything perfect in his time. He got a time for everything. All right. He got a time. Um, all right, I'm gonna pick up where I left off, y'all. God bless y'all. Where was I at Second Kings? Um, I'm gonna read this first. Oh yeah, before anything start, when everything start, most likely it's gonna like start in the home. Second Timothy, is it Second Timothy or First Timothy? Yeah, First Timothy chapter five. I'm gonna go there. Say before I knew anything, the Lord laid on my heart for real, for real. To I seen my how my great grandma was. She was by herself, for real. My grandma ain't perfect. I'm gonna give her a little junk. Though. My grandma, she saved. My great grandma, she saved. I'm gonna tell you that she she a little judgmental, <laughs> and uh, she got her ways. But God bless her. <laughs> That is a woman of God, and I thank God for it, for just make, letting her light shine a little bit as, as it did. I ain't never seen a man come in this house. <laughs> Where? I'm 28 years old. I ain't never seen a man. I ain't never seen my grand, my great-grandma talk to anybody. Where? 20, over 20 years. <laughs> she still look at that boat and the beautiful, though, or whatever it's called, that, that soap opera, all my children or something. They ain't talking about Jesus on that show. <laughs> 
But it's all good. Nevertheless, First Timothy chapter five. Y'all bear with me. First Timothy chapter five. First Timothy chapter five, verses one through twenty-four. I go there. Okay, do not rebuke an older man harshly. Verse one. First Timothy chapter five, verse one. Widows, elders, and slaves, do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should first learn of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents. For this is pleasing to God. The widow who is really in need and left and left all alone puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and, that, and to ask God for help. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60. She has been faithful to her husband and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the Lord's, of the Lord's people, helping those in trouble, and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. As for younger widows, do not put them on such a list, for when their sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus they bring judgment on themselves, because they have broken their first pledge. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but they but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. I, I, so I count... So I counsel young, younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her care, she should continue to help them and not let the church be burdened with them, so that the church can help those widows who are really in need. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves its wages. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. But those elders who are sinning, you are to reprove before everyone so that, the, so that the others may take warning. I charge you in the sight of God and in Christ Jesus and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and do nothing out of favoritism. Do not be hasty in the land on the hands and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. The sins of others trail behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious. Even those that are not obvious can, cannot remain hidden forever. Amen. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, God bless you. Where is that? Second Kings. Second Kings nineteen. Yeah. Second Kings nineteen. I think uh, where we left off, the people was trying to some dude was trying to get Hezekiah to get the people not to trust in the Lord or something. And yeah, dude was threatening Jerusalem. All right. All right, Second Kings chapter nineteen. Jerusalem deliverance foretold. When King verse one, when King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Elikam, the palace administrator, Shibna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet uh, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, <clears throat> "This is what Hezekiah says." This day is a day of distress and rebuke and, distress and disgrace. As children come to the moment of birth, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no uh, strength to deliver them, 
It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remaint that still survives. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to him, Tell your master, this is what the Lord uh, says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with which the underlings of the king, uh, the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I'll make him want to return to his own country. And there I have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now, uh, Senator re received a report that Tar Tarkaka, the king of Cush, was marching out to fight against him. So he sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you. Whew. <laughs> this dude talking wreck. Do not let the God you depend on deceive you. When he says, Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And when and will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nations, those gods weren't no gods at all, did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, the people of Eden, who were in Tel Asur? Where is the king of Hamath in Tel Asur? Where is the king of Hamath of the, or the king of Alpapad? Where are the kings of Lar, Seraphim, Hena, and Evan? Hezekiah's prayer. Hezekiah received a letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, and thrown between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your ears, Lord, and see. Listen to the word Senator has sent to ridicule the living God. Is it true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands? They have thrown their gods in the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods, but only wood and stone, fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hands, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, our God. Isaiah prophesied, Senator fall. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent the messenger to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer concerning Senator uh, Church. King of Assyria, this is what uh, this is the word what the Lord has spoken against him. Virgin daughter Zion despises you and mocks you. Daughter Jerusalem tosses her head at, as you flee. Who is it you have ridiculed and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have ridiculed the Lord, and you have said, With many chariots I have I, I have ascended the heights. I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest uh, chatters, the choices of its junipers. I have reached its remote parts, the finest of its forests. I have dug wells in the foreign land and drunk and drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago, I ordained it. In days of old, I planned. I planned it. Now, I have brought it to pass that you have turned for the. Now I brought it to pass that you have turned fortified cities into piles of stone. Their people, drained of power, are dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots, like grass sprout, sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. But I know where you are and where you come and go and how you rage against me. Because you rage against me and because your insolence has reached my ears, I put my hook in your nose and I and my bit in your mouth. And I make you return by the way you came. This will be the sign for you, Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself. The second year what springs up from uh from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more, a remainder of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remain. Out of out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors. Amen. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the kings of Assyria. He would not enter the city or shoot an, or shoot an arrow here. He would not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way he came, he'll return. He would not enter the city, declares the Lord. I will defend the city and save it for the sake 
for my sake and for the sake of uh, David, my servant. That night, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. And when the people of the Lord got up the next morning, uh, they were all there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, Sinatra, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshiping in the temple of his god Nisroch, Nisroch his sons Ad, Adram, Mil, Adram Mil, and Sharezer killed them with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Arat. And Eshar had on his son succeeding him as king. Second Kings chapter twenty. God bless you. I hope y'all enjoying y'all stuff and taking y'all time for each other. I know. I Enjoy yourself, take your time, man. I know how things is this town. Man. Second Kings chapter twenty, Hezekiah's illness. Verse one says, In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. That's right. It's gonna hit me and make me think for a second. That's right. The Lord said to him, This is what the Lord says, put your house in order, because you're going to die, and you will not recover. As a guy turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with whole heart devotion, and I've done what's good in your eyes, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Hezekiah left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah the rule of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I've heard your prayer and seen your tears. I'll heal you. And on the third day from now, you'll go up to the temple of the Lord. And I'll add 15 years to your life. And I'll deliver you from the city from the hand. Uh, and I'll deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend the city for my sake and for the sake of uh, my servant David. Amen. Then Isaiah said, prepare uh, pollutes, uh, pu pollutes, a figs. They did so and, a, and, a, and applied it to the bowl, and he recovered. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, what would a sign that the Lord, uh, what would a sign be that the Lord would heal me, and that I go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, this is the Lord's sign to you, what the Lord would do, what he has promised, that the Lord will do what he has, what he has promised. <clears throat> Shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or shall it go back 10 steps? It's a simple matter for the shadow to go forward 10 steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go back 10 steps. Then the prophet Isaiah called on the Lord and the Lord made the shadow go back 10 steps. It had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. Mm. Dude, shadow. You see your shadow is down on your feet. Dude, made that jump go back 10 steps. <laughs> that would freak me out for real. For real. <laughs> word. <laughs> uh, word. <laughs> See your shadow moving, bro. You see your little shadows moving now. You be looking, looking around. <laughs> that threw me off. But I, 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 it is what the invoice from Babylon at that time. Marduk, uh, Marduk, uh, Baladan, son, of, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters in the gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. As the guy received the invoice and showed him and showed them all that was in the storehouse, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine olive oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show, show them. Then, the, then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say and where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, They came from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? <clears throat> they saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then, I, then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. The time you would, uh, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord, and some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away, and they'll become Enoch's in the palace of the king of Babylon. 
The word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied. For for he thought, would there not be peace and security in my lifetime? The word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied. For he thought, would there not be peace and security in my lifetime? As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements and how he made the pool and the turner by which he brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of Annals of the kings of Judah? Hezekiah rested with his ancestors, and Manasseh, uh, his son, succeeded him as king. Every time y'all see me uh, read those little junks, the annals of the kings of books of Judah, Israel, there's some other books and stuff, but there's a whole lot of other books. But all that don't none of them compare to this junk. And if there's any truth of them, they all should point to the Bible. Where any book that's being written uh, should always point to the Bible. It's only one book. But it's all as many books, though. First King, uh, Second Kings chapter 21. But if any truth in any of them, they all going to point to the Bible. It should lead to Jesus. If there's any truth in it at all. Or, Good morning, Ark. I see. Second um, Kings uh, chapter twenty-one. <clears throat> uh, Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king. Y'all bear with me. Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem. Uh, 55 years. His mother's name was Hef, uh, Hefzabeth. Hesabeth. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He, re he rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Assyria pole as Ahab, king of Israel, had done. He bowed down to all the stereo hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the, he built altars in the temple of the Lord. This dude wild. Hmm. He doing is the exact opposite. What you should be. He did, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practice of uh, the nations. Dude acts for trouble. The Lord had driven up before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his, his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to, to Baal and made the Syria pose, as Ahab, king of Israel, had done. He bowed down to all the stereo hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord has said, In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, I will put my name. In the two courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to the, all the stereo hosts. He sacrificed his own son in the fire, mm. practiced divination. He sought omens and consulted mediums and spiritualists, which is uh, some fortune tellers or whatever. People, you, they, you see them on TV. They call. They pop up on nighttime. They, they at twelve o'clock. You see them. They pop up on the hotline, whatever. Call us number. Tell you read your fortune, whatever. And people be lying to y'all. Right. Send me your money. I will tell you what you want. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, he sacrificed his own son in the fire. Practiced divination. Sought omens and consulted mediums and spiritualists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He took the carved Assyria pole he had made and put it in the temple, of which the Lord had said to David and to his son Solomon, in his temple and in Jerusalem, uh, which Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites wander from the land I gave their ancestors. If only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them and will keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them. But the people did not listen. Manasseh led them astray, and so they did. And so they did more evil than all, than the, the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. Hmm. The Lord has said through His servants, the prophets, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. He has done more evil than the Amorites, who preceded him, and has led Judah into sin with his idols. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I'm going to bring disaster on Jerusalem Jerusalem, and Judah, that the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. I will stretch, I will stretch over Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the measuring line. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. <clears throat> I stretch over Jerusalem, the measuring line used against Samaria, and the plumb line used against the house of Ahab. I'll wipe out Jerusalem, Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. 
I will forsake the remain of my inheritance and give them into the hands of enemies. They will be looted and plundered by all their enemies. They have done evil in my eyes and have aroused my anger from the day their ancestors came out of Egypt until this day. Word. Moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he has filled Jerusalem, Jerusalem from end to end. Besides the sin that he had caused Judah to commit so that they so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. As for all the other events of, of Manasseh's reign, all he did, including the sin he committed, are they not written in the books of the annals of the kings of Judah? Manasseh rested with his ancestors and was buried in the place in the in the palace garden, uh, the garden of Usher, and Amon his son succeeded him as king. Amon, king of Judah. Amon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for uh, two years. Jerusalem for two years. His mother's name was Meshulimeth. Meshulimeth. Meshulimeth, daughter of uh, Harus. She was from Jabbath. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as, as his father Manasseh had done. He followed completely the ways of his father, worshiping the idols his father had worshipped and bowing down to them. He forsook the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and did not walk in obedience to him. I just caught this. I just caught this, John. These dudes, they, they, they made it into heaven and they... That last dude, Manasseh, made in the heaven too. I just rested because it said he rested with his ancestors. All these people. And, uh, all right. These people. Hmm. I got, I got to go back and write that one down. My bad, y'all. I was thinking about something. All right. Amon, king of Judah. God was faithful, even though the people faithless. I think 2 Timothy chapter 2. I refrain all. Now bear with me. I got plenty of time, my dude. God bless you. <laughs> I ain't even drunk out my coffee. If you don't get that, what I say? Second Timothy chapter two, I believe. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter two, verse eleven. Brother Paul said, "Here's a trustworthy saying: If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us." If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. <laughs> and the Lord knows. The Lord already knows. Um, I believe it was one person who denied Jesus three times. His name was Peter. <laughs> he denied him on the outside, but he never denied Jesus being in his heart. The Lord, this is this he talking about completely disowning him. He denied Jesus on the outside, but he never denied him in his heart. Uh, even when we faithless, verse 13, say he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. I love that. <laughs> people talk a lot about Peter. It was Peter who spoke 3,000 people got back and got saved that one day. And Peter often had his foot in his mouth, <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> but I love Peter, though. <laughs> wow. yeah. So don't worry about that. Peter know what it feel like. Peter denied Jesus three times in front of me. But Jesus still ain't never denied him. He never denied him in his heart. All right. <clears throat> Amen, King of Judah. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. The next verse, my favorite, and all are justified freely by the redemption that came by his grace. Amen. Amen, King of Judah. Amen was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem for two years. His mother's name was Meshulamith, uh, daughter of uh, Harza, Haruz. She was from Jabbath. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. He followed completely the ways of his father, worshiping the idols his father had worshipped and bowing down to them. He forsook the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and did not walk in obedience to him. Amon's officials conspired against him and assassinated the king in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against King Amon, and they made jo Josiah, uh, Josiah, uh, his son, king in his place. As for the other events of Amon's reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of Annals of the kings of Judah? He was buried in his tomb in the garden of us, uh, 
user, user. And Joad, Josiah, his son, succeeded him as king. Second Kings chapter 22, the book of the law found. <laughs> Man, for a long time. These people. Uh, these people ain't had the law. The God's word was in their heart. And Moses told the people in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30, you ain't got to go up to heaven, have someone bring it down to you. Ain't nobody got to go to the ocean and bring it out the ocean for you. The word closer than you know. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart. Second uh, Kings chapter 22, uh, verse 1, Josiah was eight years old when he became king. I can imagine an eight-year-old dude. Hmm. He was eight years old when he became king. <laughs> Where eight years old, bro? Man. All right. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. All right. His mother's name was uh, uh and uh, he was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. My bad. I got in Jerusalem. 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidiah, Jedidiah, Jedi, Jedidah, 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 daughter of Adiah. She was from Boscath. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shephran, uh, son of Azalia, the son of Meshulam, Meshulam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, go up to Hilkiah and the high priest and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrusted to the man, uh, to the man appointed to supervise the work of the temple. And have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord. The carpenters, the builders, the mate and the masons also have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple. But they need not account for the money entrusted to them because they are honest in their dealings. Amen. You know? Hilkiah uh, the priest said to Seraphim the secretary, I love that. When you got people you ain't got to you said they ain't even got to count the money because <laughs> they're honest. There ain't, ain't too many people around you can say that about, bro. Where you can just get a John too. I ain't even worried about it, but I know you're good. Hilkiah the priest said to Seraphim the secretary, I found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. <laughs> Hilkiah the priest said to Seraphim the secretary, I found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Seraphim who read it. Then Seraphim the secretary went to the king and reported to him. Your officials have paid out the money what was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the work. Uh, to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Seraphim, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest has given me a book. And Seraphim read it in the presence of the king. I love this. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. <laughs> he gave these orders to Hilkiah, the priest, uh, Ahekam, son of Seraphim, Arkbor, son of uh, Micaiah, 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 Seraphim, the secretary, and the sayer, the king's attendant, go and inquire the Lord for me and have the people, and, and, and go, go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people of all Judah and about what is written in this book that, what has been found, that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not, obe have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that, that is written there concerning us. It's the same thing today. People wonder why stuff going to go on and why stuff be going, going, going down the way it go down and stuff going to get worse soon. They try to, the, the, I believe America. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The founding fathers. Yeah, people, I'm black, but the founding fathers, it don't matter black, white. It ain't, it, the color thing got nothing to do with nothing. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I don't care what you're talking about. I got some white friends better than my black friends. All right? The founding fathers, George Washington, when they, God gave, he, 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 was, he was losing the battle, bro. He was losing the battle. God gave him a vision or something. And I'm telling you, God gave him a vision or something. In America, in the Declaration of Independence, one of them, is the Declaration of Independence, one of them, is, is found on the, on the principles of God's word, man. I'm telling you. And they taking that up out of there. And wonder why the Washington they they taking Abraham Lincoln the Washington stuff out of 
they taking their statues up out as we speak. <laughs> like they trying to erase that. Right, and wonder why stuff going on now. Look on TV, what they bringing in on on new stuff. <laughs> like they taking out any, they taking out anything that represented that had that God instituted the people to go on to roll with, and they uh, replacing God's word with the same thing. The same thing going on now. Wonder why stuff going on. Man, ain't nothing new under the sun, but it's crazy. And God, God ain't, he ain't happy. I'm going to tell you that now. All right. But it's good to be in his mercy and, and the angel of the Lord keep his edge protection around uh, the blood of Jesus. God. But the Lord ain't happy. And stuff is going to go down one day. Uh, but nevertheless, all right. <clears throat> yeah, when uh, verse 11 say, when the king heard the words, of the book of the law, he tore his clothes, and he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Alkan, Ahakam, son of Seraphim, Archbor, son of Micaiah, Seraphim, the secretary, and Isaiah the king's attendant, go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the Lord's people and for all of Judah about what is written in his book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us, because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of his book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Hilkiah the priest, uh, Ahikam, Archbor, Seraphim, and Isaiah went up to speak to the prophet uh, Huda, who was the wife of Shil uh, Shalom, son of Tigfa, the son of Har Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, in the new quarter. She said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, tell the man who sent you to me, this is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring disaster on this place and his people, according to everything written in the book of the kings, and according to everything written in the book the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all, the, by all the idols their hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart... I love that. Because your heart was responsive, and you humbled yourself before the Lord, when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they will be that they will become a curse and be laid waste, and because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. So they took her so they so they took her answer back to the king. <laughs> Second Kings chapter 23, Josiah, I love that. The Lord said, because your heart was responsive, <laughs> word, and you humbled yourself before the Lord. When you heard what I spoke against this place and his people, how they have become a curse and be laid waste. You tore your clothes and robes and wept in my presence. I also heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I'm going to gather you with your ancestors and you're going to be buried in peace. Your eyes are not going to see all the disaster that's gonna, that I'm going to bring on this place. Amen. <laughs> Second Kings chapter twenty three. Josiah renews the covenant. <clears throat> then the king, then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hand all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words uh, of the covenant written in his book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. The king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest next in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal and Assyria and all the stereo hosts. He burnt them outside Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes of Tibet. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem. I love that. Those who, I forget. Those who burn incense to Baal, to, to the sun and moon, to the constellations, and to all the stereo hosts, he, 
He took the Assyria pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and burnt it there. He grounded the he, he grounded to powder and scattered dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes that were in the temple of the Lord, the quarters where the women did weaving for Assyria. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and desecrated the high places uh, from Geba to Bathsheba, where the priests had burnt incense. He broke down the gateway at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the city governor, which was left on the, on the city gate. Although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate the unleavened bread with their fellow priests. He desecrated Toph, uh, to, to, he, to, to Feth, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnon, so no one could use it to, to sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire to Molech. He removed from he removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the court near the room of an official named Nathan Melech. Jo Josiah then burnt the chairs dedicated to the sun. He pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Ahaz and the altars Man Man Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there and smashed them to pieces and threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south of the hill of corruption. Hmm. Then once, then the ones Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the vow goddess of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the vow god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the people of Ammon. Josiah smashed the sacred stones and cut down the seraphims and covered the sites with human bones. Even the altar at Bethel, the high place made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin, even that altar and high place he demolished. He burnt the high place uh, and ground it to powder and burnt the Assyria pole also. Then Josiah looked around, and when he saw that the tombs that were on the hillside, he, uh, then Josiah looked around, and when he saw the tombs that were there on the hillside, he had the bones removed from them and burnt on the altar to defile it, in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by the man of God who, who foretold these things. The king asked, What is that tombstone I see? The people of the city said, it marks the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and pronounced against the altar of Bethel the very things you have done to it. Leave it alone, he said. Don't let anything don't let anyone disturb his bones. So they spared his bones and those of the prophet who had come from Samaria. Just as one just as he had done at Bethel, Josiah removed all the shrines at the high places that the kings of Israel have built in the towns of Samaria. And that uh and that he aroused the Lord's anger. Josiah slaughtered all the priests of those high places on the altars and burnt uh, human bones on them. Then he went back to Jerusalem. The king gave this order to all the people. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, as, is, as it is written in the book of the covenant. Neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Furthermore, Josiah got rid of uh, the mediums and the spiritualists, the household gods, the idols, and all the other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book of Hilkiah the priest hmm, had dis discovered in the temple of the Lord. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his strength in accordance with all the law of Moses. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of. Hmm. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burnt, which burnt, which burnt against Judah because of all that Manasseh had done to arouse his anger. So the Lord said, "I will remove Judah." also from my presence as I removed Israel and I will reject Jerusalem the city I chose and this temple about which I said my name shall be there 
As for the other events of Josiah's reign, all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? While Josiah was king, Pharaoh Necho, uh, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah marched out to meet him in battle, but Necho faced him and killed him at, the, at Medija, Megiddo. Megiddo. Josiah's servants brought his body in a chariot from Megiddo, Megiddo to Jerusalem, whatever that name is. I know I'm probably messing the junk up. Megiddo, whatever. Y'all, if y'all read, but when you look at the verse, Second <laughs> Kings twenty-three, verse uh, uh, twenty-nine. Josiah's servants brought his body in a chariot from Megiddo, uh, verse thirty, Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took jo Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in place of his father. <laughs> y'all bear with me. It's still early. Mm -hmm. God bless y'all. Mm -hmm. Jehoahaz, king of Judah. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. <laughs> That's a short time. His father's name, his mother's name, I bet, was Hamuta. Hamuta. Ham, Hamuta. Hamuta, daughter of Jeremiah. She was born from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. Pharaoh ne Necho put him in chains at Ribla in the land of Hamath, so that he might not reign in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, And he imposed on Judah a, le a levy of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho uh, made Elikam, son of Josiah, king in place of his father Josiah, and changed Elikam's name to Je Jehoiakim, but he took Jehoahaz and carried him off to Egypt, and there he died. Jehoiakim paid Pharaoh Necho the silver and gold he demanded. In order to do so, he taxed the land and expelled the silver and, uh, and gold from the people of the land according to their assessments. Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem, Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Zeb Zebedah. Zebedah, daughter of Padiah, she was from Ruma, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done, Second Kings chapter 24. During Je Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded the land, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years, his vassal for three years, but then he turned against Nebuchadne uh, Nebuchadnezzar and rebelled. Then the Lord sent, Bab uh, sent Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite, and Aramean, and Ammonite raiders against them to destroy Judah. In accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants, the prophets, surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood, for he had filled Jerusalem, Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forget. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign, all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and Jehoiakim, uh, Jehoiachin, if I'm pronouncing that right, Jehoiachin, his son succeeded him as king. These eight names is destroying me. The king of Egypt did not... Uh, the king of Egypt did not march out from his own country again because the king of Babylon had taken all his territory from the Wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin, man, Jehoiachin, king of Judah, uh, was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three Jerusalem for three months. His mother's name was Nahu, Nahu. Nahu, nah, Nahashtan, Nahashtan. <laughs> I thought some black. I got. I, I thought people in the neighborhood got some weird names. Uh, Nahashtan. Yeah, uh, his mother's name was Nahashtan, daughter of 
El Nathan, she was from Jerusalem. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. Don't laugh at me. At that time, the officers of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself uh, came up to the to the city while his office, while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiachin, king of Judah, his mother, his attendants, his nobles, and his officials all surrendered to him. In the eighth year of the reign of king of, in the eighth year of the king of Babylon, he took Jehoiachin prisoner, as the Lord had declared. Nebuchadnezzar removed the treasuries from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace, and cut up the gold articles that King Solomon, uh, king of Israel, that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the temple of the Lord. He carried all Jerusalem, Jerusalem in exile, all the officers and fighting men and all the skilled workers and, and artisans. A total of 10,000, only the poorest people in the land were left. Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin uh, cap to, to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem, Jerusalem to, he also took uh, from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother. His wives, his officials, and the prominent people of the land. <clears throat> the king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war. A thousand skilled workers and artisans. He made Matana, Jehoiachin's uncle, uh, king in his place, and changed his name to Zadokiah. Zadokiah, king of Judah. Uh, Zadokiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother's name was Hamutal, uh, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to Jerusalem uh, Jerusalem and Judah. And in, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. Uh, the fall of Jerusalem. Now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Second Kings chapter twenty-five. It's the last chapter of this chapter. Second Kings chapter twenty-five. Say so. In the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. He encamped outside the city and built siege works around all around it. The city was kept under siege until the eleventh year of King of. Uh, until the eleventh year, King Zedekiah. All right. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city had become so severe that there was no food for the people to eat. Then the city was broken. Then the city wall was broken through, and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden. Uh, though the Babylonians were surrounding the city, they fled toward Arabia, Arabia, Arabia. But the Babylonian army pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his soldiers were separated from him and scattered and was captured. He was taken to the king of Babylon at Rab Ribla, where a sentence was pronounced on him. They killed, they killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Then they put out his eyes, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, 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 Dan, commander of the imperial guard, an official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the imperial guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, not, Nebu, this dude's name weird, Nebuchadnezzar, the commander of the guard, <laughs> uh, carried into ex exile the people who remained in the city along with the rest of the populace and those who had deserted, the, uh, to, the, des deserted to the king of Babylon. <laughs> But the commander left behind some of the poorest people of the land to work the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars and movable stands and the bronze sea that were at the temple of the Lord, and they carried the bronze to, the, to Babylon. 
They also took away the pots, the shovels, the wick tremors, the dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the temple service. The commander of the imperial guard took away the censers and sprinkling bowls, all that were made of pure gold or silver. The bronze from the two pillars of the sea and the movable stands which Solomon uh, had made for the temple of the Lord. There was, there was more that could be weighed. Each pillar was 18 cubits high. The bronze capital on top of one pillar was three cubits high and was decorated with a network and pomegranates of bronze all around. The other pillar with its networks was similar. The commander of the guard took prisoners to uh, Seraph Siriah, the chief priest, Zaph, Zaphaniah, Zaphaniah, the priest uh, next in rank, and the three doorkeepers. Of those still in the city, he took the officer in charge of the fighting man, the five royal advisors. He also took the secretary, who was chief officer, uh, chief officer in charge of conscription to people, uh, the people of the land, and 60 of the conscripts who were found in the city. Nebuzar then, the commander took them all and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblin. There at Riblin, the land of Hamath, the king had them executed. So Judah went into captivity away from her land. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, appointed Jedaliah, Jedaliah son of Ahakam, the son of Seraph, uh, Seraph Saphran, to be over the people he had left behind in Judah. Then all the, then all the army officers and their men, uh, when all the army officers and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Jedaliah Jid as governor, they came to Jedaliah at Memphis. Ishmael, son of Nathan, Nathaniah, 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 uh, Nathaniah, John, Johat, <laughs> Johatan, and uh, son of Korea, Seraya, son of Tam Humus, the Naphtophrite, uh, Jazz, Jaznaya, the son of Malkilite, and their men, Jedediah, Jedaliah, hmm, his name is crazy. Jedaliah took, that, took an oath to reassure them and their men, do not be afraid of the Babylonian officials, he said. Settle down in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will go well with you. In the seventh month, however, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishema, uh, who was of royal blood, came with ten men and assassinated Jedaliah and also the, Jedaliah, and also the men of Judah and the Babylonians who were with them at Mitzvah. At this, all the people from least to greatest together with all the army officers fled for Egypt for fear of the Babylonians. Jehoiachin released in the 37th year uh, of the exile of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the year of all Marduk, hmm. okay. in the year of all, of all Marduk, uh, became king of Babylon. He released Jeho 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 Jehoiachin, king of Judah, from prison. He did this on the 27th day, on the 12th month. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat of honor higher than those than those of any of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. Day by day, the king gave Jehoiachin a regular allowance as long as long as he lived. Hmm. That's the end of that, John. I'm gonna stop there. Pick up tomorrow. Well, I don't know. I see what I gotta do. I don't know if I gotta go to work or not. I gotta see what's going on. But anyway, I'm gonna see y'all again. Hmm. I'm gonna see y'all again. Y'all know how things be. I know y'all got stuff going on. I got stuff going on too. Yeah, you know. But God bless y'all. My times might be changing a little bit, but it's all good. Y'all got a Bible. Y'all got a radio. Y'all got a whole lot of great people. A whole lot of great people around this brand for y'all, man. I love Equip FM. It's a great radio station. EquipFM.org. Click that Listen Live button. It's a whole lot of past over here. I love to listen to Dr. Brother Mike Nem. Rest in peace, uh, Chuck Smith. Uh, it's a whole lot of people, man. It's a whole lot of people. It's a whole lot of people. It's a whole lot of people. More than I got, even got time to name. But it's a whole lot of people. 24-7. You 
Y'all take y'all time. Keep praying. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. They trust in the Lord. There's only one person that matters more than anything. That's Jesus. Where he, you know, he got a time. But he got people there for y'all, too. Don't get too caught up on me. Where I think Paul, somebody was caught up in following Paul and following Apollos. Paul said, who is Paul and what is Apollos? I plant the seed. Apollos watered it. But it's God who make it grow. You know? Put your hope and faith and trust in the Lord day by day. No matter how you get your word, where you get your word, get it in however you can. And you keep praying and keep taking your time. It's a time by time thing. It's gonna be some problems. You can't have daytime without nighttime. It's inevitable. All right. You're gonna see some sunshine, you're gonna see some dark time, but it's all good. Y'all love y'all. Y'all keep praying for I keep praying for y'all. God bless y'all.